Blessing, and you're here with me on the Erica Blessing Show, where I bring you luminaries and creatives and interesting people so you can get inspired every single day that you listen. And my guest today is so inspirational. He's a dancer and an artist, and a, uh, he's got so much going on. He's very inspirational, and he coaches, and I'm just very glad he could come and hang out with me this morning <laughs> from his busy life. So welcome, Peps. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Erica? Yeah, you know, I'm creating. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not always creating as well as I could, but at least I'm not dead. <laughs> I I feel that 100 percent actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I my it's really interesting when we do an audio interview. When you know, um, so much of when I think about you, I think of you as moving and being in movement, and <laughs> and may, maybe for you know some of the entrepreneurs who are listening. How, maybe just share with us some uh, ways of getting getting more in touch with our bodies or learning how to kind of be art with our bodies. Um, mm, that's a good question. I think for me, I'm always moving. Like, even at my job or even on this interview right now, I'm just walking around in my mom's bedroom because I'm visiting her, and I'm just always just moving either my hands or my fingers. Um... And I think it's just important to not be still all the time. I think when we get into work mode, whatever that is, especially if you have a traditional like nine to five job or if you have a very um, mentally rigorous job that requires you to focus, we can kind of get stiff and we just completely negate the physicality of our bodies. So I think what I like to do is I like to stand when I work and then also as a dancer, like, I can't help but move. So I try to at least give myself within the day, maybe like 20, 30 minutes of like just exploring movement at home, listening to music, see how it makes me feel. I like to lay that on my floor and <laughs> start painting my, my body and doing like floor snow angels and then just letting my body take me wherever it wants to go because as smart as we are, we're also very animalistic. So just letting our bodies do what they want to do is super important, at least for me. It makes me feel happier and normal at the end of the day. You know, that reminds me of my, I used to have a, um, if you go on uh, YouTube for my uh, channel, I have a playlist that's like a, a rock out pay playlist. It's got a bunch <laughs> of, uh, it's, got, it's got a bunch of old rap songs on it. <laughs> I support it. I support it. <laughs> Yeah, because I think there is a, a way of starting the day where you, um, I, I'm guilty of being too sedentary, you know, as a writer, it's, it can be something, you know, a podcasting where I'm just sitting still on that microphone too much, you know, so I appreciate this yeah. kind of like waking up, um, I'm waking up the reminders of, of the, you know, the magic of dance and the magic of movement. Um, yeah. tell me about one of the most fun, like, dance experiences you've had. Um, hmm. There's been, I'm trying to think of, like, what is the most, like, fun. I will say more of, like, what I've gotten, gotten into this past year. I've been getting into the, the Vogue, um, this past year in a very, like, big, big way. And for people who don't know, like, Vogue dancing is from New York and there's three different styles of voguing but what I love about learning how to vogue and getting immersed in the culture because it's a culture actually it's a very interesting culture where there are people who grew up um, who are part of the LGBTQ community and they were kind of like ostracized from their family so they created this culture where they created families for themselves from other dancers from other vogers um, so getting immersed in that culture has been really, really great. Not because my family has ever ostracized me. Thankfully, I never had that issue. But getting into tap into these, like, very dramatic diva characteristics of your stuff that you may not necessarily, necessarily display has been super fun. You definitely get to become a whole different person while you're dancing. Um, 
So I will say to anybody who's listening who struggles with like confidence or just wants to feel like Mariah Carey or Beyonce, <laughs> deep down inside, take like a vocal class. You'll definitely have a good time. I love it. I've, I've never heard of that. So that's good news for me to learn something new. And I want, you know, to my age, she's been a, um, I was going to ask you about that, like the, the, how, how, what do you recommend for someone who like doesn't really like it when they see themselves in the mirror or doesn't really like photographs of themselves? Because one thing I know mm-hmm. about you is you have this ease with yourself and the camera that is really something that a lot of people don't have and so maybe just share with us how to how to kind of like get over that if um I think one of your uh sayings is like get over it (laughs) (laughs) uh pretty that is definitely one of my things um well there's a few things that I feel like go into answering that question I think for one um I didn't actually grow up like unconfident but I didn't grow up let's say like brimming with confidence um I kind of grew up somewhere in the middle and I never really thought a lot of the things that I'm doing now were things that would be available to me so growing up all I wanted to do was act um but you know like most most kids like we listen to our parents and we go to school and then we get these jobs and you're like this is really boring um and thinking about like what is it that you want to do and then I started pursuing entertainment um pretty much later than most so maybe like at least at the age of 22 was when I started taking my first dance class and then that was before I started modeling which was about like two three years ago um but it took me a long time to get comfortable with being on camera get comfortable with myself with my body with my looks that I would honestly honestly say the biggest thing is giving yourself time mm. and patience to like go through the process because there is no shortcut to getting comfortable with yourself. Like there is no time frame. There's no point A will last you two to three months and then point B will last you two weeks and then point C through E will well, I'll probably take two years. Like, like, there's, You're like there's it's no... so not linear. It's like it's like a what you just showed me telepathically, whether you wanted to or not, was like a whole series of aha moments that all of a sudden culminate <laughs> in you've moved your needle. Like you're now more comfortable, yeah. more confident. But it was like it might have taken five classes, or it might take someone else thirty classes. Like we don't know because where we come yeah. from is so different, and so like it's like what it what it takes to move the needle is very interesting. (laughs) Yeah. What I will say, there are certain things you can do to like move the needle. Like you can start thinking about your thought process. So um, for example, I took this seminar a few years back where it was primarily um, revolving around your relationship to money and they made you take this quiz and it said like, do I think people that are wealthy are bad people, true or false? Do I think um, becoming rich takes a lot of hard work, true or false? So based on whatever your answers were on the quiz, so do your relationship to money. And then I remember the facilitator said, every time you have a negative thought to money, it's reinforcing your relationship. So for example, I think it takes a lot of hard work to make a lot of money. Like, it could be true, but it could also just be your justification for not having enough money. So the way I took that and applied it to myself, especially with confidence, because there was a period during college where I had a lot of anxiety. Um, the way I took that for myself was how can I apply this to everything, everything that I struggle with? So when it came to myself, I would start observing my thoughts. So I remember doing this dance job and seeing the footage and I was like, wow, I look terrible granted <laughs> they, granted there could have been things I could have worked on but saying you look terrible isn't going to do anything for you long term so seeing like how you how you talk to yourself and then yeah trying to rectify it in a different way yeah is one of the things that you can do for confidence um I so I would just say like it's becoming more aware of your thought process right and then also like doing the work to like 
correct it. Like when I had a friend that I was testing on my coaching program on last year, I gave him a rubber band and I said, every time you have a negative thought about yourself, you're going to snap this rubber band on your wrist so you can feel what it feels like to have a negative thought in real time. And he was like, I had like 25 million like rubber band markings on my wrist. It was a little <laughs> masochistic, but it helped him clearly to the point of like how how negative he was thinking about himself. So like being yeah. aware of what you're thinking about and then also doing the work to change it, I feel like is the biggest thing. And then also, not to sound super petty, but if you struggle with confidence, like you might need to take a step away from things that make you feel more unconfident. So if I'm struggling with my dancing like and I'm seeing other people who are great dancers and I'm making and I'm seeing them and it's making me feel worse about myself then maybe I should just stop looking on the pages for the time being and so I can work on my own stuff because realistically our reaction to somebody is more more of a reflection about us than of them so if something or someone yeah. is making you feel more unconfident I think it's okay to like put it on mute change the tv station not because you're hating on them or because you're jealous of them, but because you still have to work on your own confidence and seeing something that reminds you of where you still want to be, but it's bringing out a negative response from you, you could just put it to the side for the time being until you feel more secure in yourself. I had, a, um, I had an interesting experience. I was um, doing an interview much like this one, Peps, and I was like, picturing myself like at the dinner table with my guests, but I had put the guest on such a big pedestal that I could mm -hmm. never imagine. Like I go, what showed up for me was I could picture myself as the waitress at the table, right? Oh, no. and I, I am not joking. And I'm sitting there going, hold, cause I put, cause I get these amazing guests, right? Much like yourself. But sometimes I put them so high above me, like in my own estimation that but the, here's the thing that's crazy about that, that self-talk is every time you, you get aware, as soon as I became aware of it, I could equalize it differently. Mm -hmm. Like I could, like yeah. I could, if, if I wasn't aware that I was looking at them and putting them over here and me, you know, putting them over there and me over here, I have to own the part of me that is like that, that allows us to have that connectivity, right? Yeah. And then... When yeah. you grow that in your mind's eye, like you grow how much more you are like them than apart, then you can keep growing that piece of you that you want to be like them, right? So yeah. it's really interesting when you when you put yourself out. I was seriously like not, I, I was sitting there last night thinking about how many times I like excluded myself from the table. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even so, even that, just reminds me of like, how do I say this? There's a group of people that I've known for a while. And when I met them, I was very unconfident. So sometimes there will be times where I'll see people from that group, or I'll see the entire group, and almost like I'll subconsciously revert to feeling a little bit like less than self conscious. Or, yeah, or not enough than. Right. And so, yeah, and then I have to literally talk to myself and just reiterate who I am to myself, remind myself that we're all in the same room together, that nobody's better than anybody else. So, like, sometimes we also just have these weird ingrained habits that just get triggered and makes us do or feel certain ways about ourselves that aren't the best. Right. But I honestly feel like, that's just more of an example. That's just a more drastic example of just being more aware. But also, what I've learned too is, and it's, I feel like I'm speaking in this weird, like, metaphysical, psychological way. But what I've learned too is that um, we usually attract, the, attract people that are similar to us. Um, so I'll start thinking to myself, well, if I'm feeling subconscious, I'm sure there's a, a few other people in this group who are also feeling subconscious about something can't just be me um so then that also helps me like level the playing field because yeah. Yeah. we always like to show up you know not with this facade but with our best foot forward and very 
confident and very strong and very like, this is what I do. My name is Erica Glessing. I have my TV show and my podcast and all, all these things. But at the same time, there's also the backside of you that's kind of like, oh, I have this insecurity. I have to get this much work done. And that's pretty much happening in somebody else's mind. I'm almost 100% certain. So like that like levels the playing field, I feel like for me also. Wow, that's really fun. I love how you think. I love, you know, I just wanted to tell people too, one thing that when you said that, um, one of my friends, Rebecca, taught me, um, instead of like when I start being upset at myself for not being farther along in certain areas of my life, mm-hmm. uh, I replaced that with just this one phrase of like, things are always working out for me or mm-hmm. things are always working out for the best, or things are always working out, like, in God's plan, or I kind of, like, remember yeah. that sort of, like, why the hell am I going through this? With <laughs> 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 like, my daughter almost missed her flight the other day. She's going to Canada, and I, I was okay. like, okay, you know, this is the rubber meeting the road, you know, because I had bought her the tickets. I was all invested in her doing it right, you know, like getting on the plane. And it was so funny because when I just said to myself, you know, things are always working out, like things are always working out. I was like, this is where the rubber meets the road. And then she got on a different plane. Everything worked out. She got there fine. Like it worked out fine. But it was funny (laughs) because staying in that place when it looks like everything's kind of out of control it's like easy to be in that place when you're making money and you're, you know, it's like yeah. <laughs> you've got a hit show or you've got a hit, you know, you're on Broadway, you know, like everything's working. You're like, oh yeah, it cats me out. But it's when like things are just like crunchy that you, that it t- requires that that you know discipline you were saying of of the negative self talk not taking over. <laughs> yeah, and but also like it's so funny that you mentioned that because. I do also believe that sometimes those moments where we're like, what's happening? Or why does this keep happening? Sometimes I also think that we'll go through similar feelings or similar situations because either we have to change something or because we haven't learned something. So like for me, for example, like I haven't, I'm going to say this very, like, vaguely, but let's just say because I'm still single, I'll, I can confidently say I haven't successfully dated. And I say this because I'll find myself in, in different scenarios with different people. And then I'm like, why does it always seem to progress down the same road? Like, why are we going to the same, like, yeah. BS? I don't, I don't know if I could swear on your show, so I'm, just, I'm going to say BS. Um, so I was like, what is it? And then I realized, I'm like, well, if there's, let's say, hypothetically, six people that I've gone through, and then um, the common denominator, then it's like, either I need to learn something <laughs> and do something different, or I need to figure out a different approach. Because a lot of times, too, like, yes, ultimately, everything does work out in our favor, but also... I do think we can save us a little bit of time and a little bit of frustration if we also just start seeing like what are the things that we keep on repeating, whether subconsciously or consciously, that right. we that maybe we can change. Cause it's like it's like money. So many people <laughs> know how to make money, but myself included, like I struggle with saving money, and it's because I do like to go shopping or. <laughs> uh, <It's so laughs> or <laughs> you know, I love how real we're being. Like we're saying we're not saying like we got this. We're not saying like, oh yeah, we are the you know, like really I think with creativity you already have it. Like you don't have to work at it, like you just are it. Like it is who you are. So I feel like with creativity, like you're just an A plus individual and no one can ever take that from you. And then I Thank love you. that we're like I love that we're like ferreting out these places where we totally suck in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I think it's so like for me, like I just learned too that nobody really has it all together. Like nobody has it all together. <laughs> and then two, there was a moment where I was feeling like I had to be a hundred percent perfect. And then I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna have like 
some sort of illness or something kind of stuff is going to happen where I won't be able to be perfect in front of anybody yeah. that it's just so it's also just so much more relaxing just to be yourself <laughs> and to try to like limit yourself or somebody else just like my <laughs> my my tip of of the year just be, be yourself <laughs> I know. Well, I could just talk to you forever, but it, we're going to probably end the show in a minute. So it was so fun that you came and we had this conversation and I hope people got inspired and and I I want to uh, thank you so much, Pups, for taking the time. And thank I know you. you're going to be doing amazing things in the future. Um, where can people kind of follow you or reach you? I think you have an Insta or where would you like people to find you? Yeah, so... I'm very prevalent on Instagram. Um, I say that even though I always take a break from Instagram like every other day. <laughs> um, but I'm mostly available on Instagram because I'm still working on my website, which I hope to launch first quarter of 2020. But my Instagram handle is peps, which is P as in Peter, E as in elephant, P as in Peter, Z as in zebra, underscore J-A-V-I-E-R. Um, so yeah, that's the easiest place. And also my email's on there. So if anybody has any questions, they can DM me or email me. And I love talking to people. So I'll pretty much respond, um, really quickly. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me.